Hey, thanks for watching another episode on Breakfast on Board. We have been coming to the marina quite often every week,、uh, especially during the COVID. It's really a nice little staycation for us, coming here and finding actually better social distancing than any place in the urban city. And、uh, we do bring our food on each weekend,、uh, pack it in our coal box, as well as bring some drawing and painting equipment. Where Chris do a painting, writing a poetry. It's just a fun place to come in. So today we're going to do a little bit of a marina walkthrough, and as well as to fulfill some of the viewers' request to learn how to make sourdough. I've made over 200 loaves of sourdough since October last year, and I'm just intense and crazy about making as many as possible. Made a lot of mistakes, so I'm going to do a video clip here. And、uh, on the background, I'll be showing how we walk through the marina. Like、uh, here, Natasha visited us a few weeks ago, and get to walk around to enjoy the、um, marina lifestyle. So I hope you enjoy watching the sourdough making process as much as I make and bake. It's really fun, and it's part of a healthy living. Enjoy watching, and I hope someday I have you on the boat. Stay on and watch for the sourdough video. The thing about this video is, it's all about sourdough. So for those of you who are trying to watch a marina lifestyle, we'll have all sourdough to seventeen minutes of it. But in order to make sure that it is part of the marina、uh, experience, I have put inside the window of our marina pier walk around. So while the sourdough video is in the middle, which you will see in a moment. Of the frame, of picture in picture, right around it is actually the marina walkabout video. Why am I not showing you the marina walkabout video? Because it's not allowed. I'm not supposed to do filming on the marina privacy issue, whatever the issue is. But I will film it, so I'm not supposed to show everything. But showing it at the frame of this box that I'm doing sourdough will still give you a flavor about our walk through in the marina and some boats at the corner. And、uh, good enough, but not totally violating the. I look forward to you watching. Hope you make good sourdough, and I'm gonna get out of this frame right now. Wanting to make a sourdough bread. Here are some of the steps that guarantees you a nice tasting and beautiful sourdough. Here are what you need: whole wheat flour, unbleached plain flour or bread flour. You also need sourdough starter or leaven, filtered water, digital weighing scale, and a large mixing bowl. There are twelve easy steps to making a sourdough. The very first step is to get a starter from someone and activate it by feeding it. it takes about two to three hours. Then you mix the flour and the water, which is the dough, and you let it rest. Called the auto lease process. Step three: wait for an hour, and you add salt. The salt is give it taste, and to stop the auto lease. And then for step five is bulk fermentation of stretch, stretch and fold. After about two hours, we shape the dough. We put the dough in the fridge for about twelve hours. Next morning, we preheat the oven, take out the dough, we score it with a razor. We bake it for 45 minutes, cool it in a cooling rack, and ready to eat in two hours. To learn about making the mother sourdough starter, you may follow any YouTube videos. For now, let's talk about making the levain for the sourdough. Now, let's talk about the ingredients to make the levain. First, you need organic unbleached flour, the starter, an empty jar, filtered water, non-chlorinated if possible, a large spoon. And a weighing scale, digital if possible. We begin from the sourdough starter, and we need to weigh 50 grams of the original starter, and putting it 
into the empty jar where we're gonna make the Levan. The Levan and the starter are used interchangeably. The terms are about the same. Uh, we usually make the Levan in a certain proportion of water ratio to Levan, uh, where the mother starter is always one to one ratio, uh, water starter and flour, one to one to one. So you can see from the video that we are scooping just about 50 grams of uh, started from the main jar and it don't have to be precise uh, but as precise as you could next we're going to scoop some unbleached plain flour into the jar with the exact amount of the same in weight as the starter so we've had 50 grams of the starter we'll add 50 grams of unbleached flour to this jar then reset the scale and we pour 50 grams of water to this mixture of already 50 grams of flour and 50 grams of starter. This makes a 1 to 1 to 1 ratio of starter to flour and water. And now we stir it vigorously making sure that all the um, powdered flour is all mixed into the water and the levant or the starter. So we get it all mixed up into a really pasty, gooey uh, mixture and that's what you want to do. Uh, mix it as much as possible. I like to use a spoon, some people like to use a fork. Whatever you use, um, just mix it and there's no cleaner way or less messier way than what is this. And now this is a magic, the rubber band. You place a rubber band just around the level where the starter has come up to. And this is going to be very useful because when it rises up in a few hours time, you have a comparison of the original level so you know how much it has expanded. Now let's test the readiness of the starter. The activity of the, the activeness of the starter depends on whether the starter is has a lot of bubbles and carbon dioxide. And the way to do it is to scoop a small scoop and drop it into some clear water. Drop. Come on. Get down more. And slowly. There you go. Wow, it's floating. Now this is what we call a float test. When the starter floats, it is ready. It means that it has enough. Uh, air in the dough uh, which means that it is really active. Another indicator of an active starter is to look for the bubbles and if you put your ear next to the jar you can actually hear the bubbling and the cracking of those bubbles. the ingredients for mixing the dough. Now let's get started. First thing we need to do is reset the scale and we'll get a hundred grams of the starter from the jar that we have prepared earlier. Um, get a large spoon or fork. I like a spoon and we can scoop a hundred grams of this into the mixing bowl. Now let's add water to the mixture. First we reset the scale and get uh, some filtered water. We need 350 grams. Then let's give the mixture a stir so that they are nicely dissolved before we add the flour to the mixture. Next, we add the flour to the mixture. I start with the unbleached plain flour and I reset the scale and this I add 250 grams. If you do have bread flour, you could use that too. 
and slowly use a scale to weigh it and you might stir it as you go along or you can add everything in before you stir next I'll add the whole wheat flour and this is another 250 grams and you're actually making a 500 gram dough uh, plus water it will end up to be almost a 950 to 980 gram final product of the bread now we have all the dry components which are the two flour uh, and the wet component which is the water plus the starter it's time to stir them up and mix them together you can do it in many ways I use the spoon to, to slowly stir in the wet and the dry component to get them integrated into some kind of a paste um, because I'm using a slightly smaller bowl so I'm doing very small motion you got to be a bit patient with this if you're having a larger container you can have bigger stirring motion but essentially the goal of this stage is either you use a spatula like what you're watching with this orange spatula or the spoon um, try to slowly bring in the dry flour into the center where the water are and slowly kind of have a small chopping motion and they'll start getting mixed up together don't worry about the beginning where they don't seem to be coming all together it will come together at the end take your time and it still might look a bit shaggy and messy um, use a spatula continue with it you can use your hands wet it and as you start kneading it slowly in the bowl you could bring it out on the table and continue kneading with your palms and pulling it together and after about six to seven minutes you start feeling the structure of the dough forming and it's a little bit firm and elastic that's where you can stop
twinkling lights in a pink Hi, I'm back. So I hope you get to watch the Saldo video and uh, get to do it because it's really simple. If you follow every step that I put out there, you make a great Saldo just like what I have right here. Okay? Enjoy Saldo. It's healthy for the guts because of the long fermentation process and the, the bacterial microbia that's used to make Saldo is made natural. We got it from the air, from the flour, from the water. It's not uh, artificial yeast or cultivated yeast. It's just natural from your starter. If you have no patience to make your starter, which takes you seven days, uh, send me a message. I'll send you a small portion of the starter. Come pick it up and you can get started with that. Okay? So enjoy Saldo. Have good guts. My dreams away So tonight, before tonight I'm by your side Under the velveteen sky